finals at six. But right now on BBC One and BBC One HD, slightly later than Bill's, it's final score. Good afternoon and welcome to Final Score. As we continue to follow leagues that remain as unpredictable as Alan Shear's shirts. With me, two men who are worth a fortune in old money. Garth Crooks and Gary Pallister are here. Let's get straight down to it and get you some latest scores in the Barclays Premier League. Well, a couple of, couple of games still scoreless. Aston Villa are 1-0 up at home to West Brom. West Brom going for a hat-trick of wins. Aston Villa looking to reverse an unwanted trends. No goals at Goodison, no goals at Craven Cottage. Newcastle United, Liverpool's an evening kickoff, but Alan Pardew has arrived at St James's Park. Stoke City are losing at home to the team who trained all week on Blackpool. Beats their 1 0 up, and West Ham United, bottom of the table, and down on their luck. They pushed hard at 1 0 down to Man City, but a sucker punch from Yaya Turi. He's got two in that game so far. In fact, let's go to Upton Park and get a full report from uh, David Garrido. Thanks very much indeed, Colin. Yes, West Ham nil, Manchester City 2, as you say. We've seen the good and the bad of City this afternoon. The good, absolutely no doubt about it. Yaya Toure with those two goals. The first a superb finish. First time left-footed into the roof of the net, although the Hammers defending was a touch sloppy. And then the second totally did James Tonkins for pace down the left. Fired against the post, but it went back in off a West Ham keeper Rob Green's back. So a little unlucky for Green. David Silver has been impressive too. But the bad for City, Mario Balotelli. Missed two straightforward chances in the first half, but for descent in the second after having a right Divas drop and then subbed on the hour. As for the Hammers, Junior Stanislas had a fierce shot well saved by Hart. He's been replaced by Kieran Dyer. Colton Cole is also on for Palavera. He's got a good 10 minutes to make a difference, but it doesn't look like it will be their day. West Ham nil, Manchester City 2. Aston Villa have lost their last four games in all competition. It will not be five, Ivan Gasco. No, you sense that Villa needed a second goal to make it safe and at last it's come. There was a bit of confusion in the heart of the West Brom defence and the ball fell. Perhaps he didn't really appreciate it, it was on its way to him, but Albrighton swinging cross with his right foot. Well, he was perhaps more alert than I gave him credit for. Emil Heskey touching the ball in. He didn't know too much about it, but to be fair to him, reacted well. They needed that second goal after that early goal midway in the first half from Downing. It looks like it's safe and perhaps they're sending their second win in 11 Premier League games now. It's me. We move from the red button on the BBC One and the goals fly in. The Upton Park, another one for David Garrido. And it's a third goal for Manchester oh. City. Superb play by David Silva playing through Adam Johnson. The weight of the pass is absolutely perfect. Split the West Ham defence. Johnson just rounded keeper Rob Green and slotted it home. It's West Ham nil, Man City three. Well, we joked earlier when the first goal went in from Yaya Toure. How many more did Man City need to go top of the Premier League at goal difference? Just six more will do them. Yaya Toure's first strike is a sensational strike. His second goal is a great individual goal. Silva... Uh, has been would appear to have been overshadowed by uh, Yaya Toure, but not the case. He's ran the show, and the the the, the, the third goal for City was was absolutely a fabulous ball for Johnson to come through. Great run Silver from Johnson, wasn't it? Yeah. As well, yeah. Outstanding. Gary, cast your mind back. Do you remember that game where? Blackpool and Ian Holloway sent almost a reserve squad up to play at Villa mm. Park and they get yeah. beat 3-2. They put it into the context, that's the last time Aston Villa have won a game in this league, so a big, big result going their way at the moment. It is a, a big result and uh, they've played well. They've, uh, they've been decent today. and uh, As well as West Brom have passed the ball at times, they've probably had enough craft up front to, to score. Okay, well, a bit listen. gentle, West Brom, I thought, up front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't wing you, remember. But yes. they started very well, but just a bit gentle in the last third for me. OK, don't forget, Stoke have been in a great run. On the up and on the up. Five games unbeaten, three wins and two draws. Something needs to change, Andrew James, or that run comes to an end. Yes, indeed, they're doing well, though, here today. The game, of course, billed as a tribute, if you like, to Sir Stanley Matthews, the first time these two have met in the top flight since 1971. But it was very much the, uh, the youngster, if you like, DJ Campbell, who's uh, put Blackpool ahead, his third goal of the season after good work from Varney and Adam right at the start of the second half, and that after Fuller had hit the bar for Stoke and should have scored right at the start of the second half for Stoke Fuller. Blackpool went down the other end and scored from that chance. They should have made it 2-0 through Gary. 
Gary Taylor-Fletcher, but he headed against a crossbar from Charlie Adams' free kick. Stoke have sent on uh, their substitute options, including uh, uh, Walters and Tunkai, to try and change things up. But it looks like Blackpool could well be on for a fourth away win in the Premier League. Credit to them. Stoke nil, Blackpool won. Now, the last time Sunderland visited West London, they left carnage everywhere. They went 3-0 winners at, uh, at uh, Stamford Bridge against Chelsea. Not the case today, Roger Johnson, at Craven Cottage against Fulham. No, it's uh, Fulham nil, Sunderland nil, Colin, a stalemate. Perhaps unsurprisingly, between two sides who've drawn half or more of their games, it's only really come to life in the final half hour. To that point, the only efforts on target, three Fulham shots from range. The home side almost went ahead, though. Andrew Johnson's snapshot from two yards, blocked by Mignolet's legs. The Dutchman preferred in goal to Craig Gordon today. Zenden and Jan are on from the bench for Sunderland, have yet to get a shot on target, although Zenden has just fizzed one past the post, although at the moment he's down receiving treatment, having taken a shot or a, a clearance full in the face from John Pansil, and he seems to be in a bit of trouble, I have to say, Bolo Zenden. We're uh, into the final six minutes here, and uh, Zenden's going to be stretched off, I think. It's nil-nil. Now, the Brews count much higher than the goal count at Goodison Park. It's Everton against Wigan, and it's been watched by Damien Johnson. Yeah, nil-nil, the home side have created enough chances, though, to win three or four matches. It's been feisty and full-blooded, as you suggest. Al Habsi, the hero in the Wigan goal, denying Pinar, Saha and Coleman as uh, Everton attack now, but the shot is blocked. Tim Cahill hit the post with a header. Last week's match saver at Chelsea, Jermaine Beckford is on for Louis Saha. Real juxtaposition uh, between Beckford, hungry to get involved, and Saha languid and disinterested for most of the afternoon. Uh, Rodwell went close for Everton a moment ago as well. Nine minutes remaining, nil-nil. Awesome. Craig Brown very happy he hasn't taken over Aberdeen early enough to be in charge at Tyne Castle today. They travelled to Hearts and Bram McLaughlin, they're getting thumped. They are, they're doing an absolute doing, I have to say. They trailed by five goals, you know, Templeton, a double from Scatcho, Elliott, and the pick of the bunch coming from Arvidas Novakovic just a few moments ago. A right foot effort from the edge of the 18 yard box into the, the postage stamp, top left hand corner of the net. They've been outfought, outplayed, hearts have looked hungry. This, we have to say, they've taken on a very good heart side. Won the last four games without conceding a goal. A win today will take them within six points of second place Celtic but Aberdeen this result will send them bottom of the SPL there's still seven minutes left and they trail by five to nil welcome Craig Brown let's stay in the SPL St Murren uh, are taking on St Johnson and it's been watched by Ian Turner yeah it's a good game now Colin still 1-1 we've got seven and a half minutes to go anybody's game after an instantly forgettable first half we've had a much better second um, St Johnston took the lead with a bullet header from Sam Parkin. The lead only lasted eight minutes at St Johnston Wall, allowing a Michael Higdon free kick to find its way into the corner of the net. Good match now, 1-1, anybody's game. Only two wins and seven for Tony Mowbray since he arrived at the Riverside. Cardiff looking to close the gap at the top of the championship to just one point after QPR were beaten brilliantly by Watford last night at Loftus Road. It's not happening, Steve Sutton, for Cardiff. It's not. They still trail by that uh, Julio Arca penalty in the first half. Middlesbrough won Cardiff nil, um, but they have been knocking on the door in the last ten minutes. Craig Bellamy making a real nuisance of himself. He hit the side netting with one effort. Uh, shaved the top of the crossbar with another. Michael Chopra forced a great save from Jason Steele. The game halted at the moment for treatment to Steele. He dived at the feet of uh, Chopra. Chopra carried on. That led to uh, a, a bit of a scene of handbags uh, between the two sides, but uh, it's all being calmed down now, and uh, we're probably ready to get underway in a few more moments. 1-0 to Middlesbrough. And Manish will be getting dizzy right now, planning his show tonight, especially when he looks at the score between Sheffield Wednesday and Bristol Rovers at Hillsborough and back to busy Alan Biggs. Sheffield Wednesday 6, Bristol Rovers 2, shows you what one wave of Milan Mandarich's checkbook can do for a football club, but really Mandarich has done no more than wave from the director's box and then salute waves of attack from his new team, but Mandarich's takeover has certainly changed the whole atmosphere here at Hillsborough, and even Will Hoskins' early goal for Bristol Rovers failed to burst the bubble by half-time, they were 4-1 down, Chris Sedgwick, Tommy Miller, Gary Teal and then Jermaine Johnson with a fantastic four uh, Hoskins sp uh, spectacularly replied for Bristol Rovers his second of the game but James O'Connor and now Paul Heffernan have made it Sheffield Wednesday 6 
Bristol Rovers 2. And Sheffield Wednesday getting some help from the Yorkshire neighbours here to the Gal Farm and Harry Gration. Huddersfield have just taken the lead. It's been scored by Jason McCuma and he's headed the ball in. Brighton probably will feel agreed. They play some lovely football in this second half, but Huddersfield have refused to give up. What a goal that could be. How vital to Towns. Promotion hopes at the end. 2-1. I tell you what, what a game of turf mood today. Richard Askham's been watching. Burnley soaring out into the lead. The lead. Leeds drew it back level. What's the latest, Richard? We've just had another goal, Colin. It's now Burnley 2, Leeds 3. Johnny Housen, the lead skipper, with a terrific solo effort. He drove from the centre circle, attacked the box before curling in a beauty past Lee Grant. Burnley just go on the attack. They asked for a penalty, but it's just outside the box. It's been that sort of game, Colin. This after Leeds really came out of the blocks this half. Gradle and Becchio, the Argentines, 12th of the season, cancelling out first-half goals from Easton and Rodriguez for Burnley. But now Leeds have the lead. Burnley 2, Leeds 3. And one comeback is never enough. So to the Walker Stadium and Mark Bishop, who's watching Leicester against Doncaster. Leicester City 4, Doncaster Rovers 1. That's right, Colin. Terrific comeback from Sven Goran Eriksson. Side took England to two World Cup quarterfinals this afternoon. He really has earned his money. He's masterminded a terrific uh, comeback from his side. 1 0 down after six minutes to that Billy Sharp goal, his 100th in his career. And then Leicester awarded that controversial penalty. The argument will rage on long into the night from Sean O'Driscoll, the Doncaster manager. Neil Sullivan, a judge, to have tripped uh, Dyer right on the edge of the penalty area. Gallagher then made it 1 1. And then Leicester ran right riot in the second half, still piling on the pressure, a rocket from Richie Wellens 2-1, Carl Norton 3-1 and then 4-1 from the Mercurial Darius Vassell, Leicester showboating and they lead by four goals to one. Six wins in 12 for Spain since he arrived there but the Upton Park and a goal for David Garrido to tell us about. And it's gone to the home side, West Ham 1, Man City 3 James Tompkins with a head of deflected past his own keeper by Colo Torre I think it was, so the Hammers have one back but surely it's too late. West Ham one, Man City three. No, oh, we got another goal for you in the Premier League this time at Villa Park. Yes, uh, with about a minute of normal time to go, Villa have uh, just seen themselves pulled back here. West Brom have threatened to score, and at last they have. Is it too late? Shana's towering header at the far post. I don't know whether West Brom truly believe they can rescue this, but they've got a few minutes to find out. Tell you what, with people like Dorans on your side, we talked earlier, guys, about the team ethic that they have. They're never given up under Roberto Di Matteo. I mean, Dorans an absolute legend to, to be, the baggies. To be fair, Colin, I think they lost a little bit of faith. Um, West Brom. It seemed as though a lot of the good play in the first half didn't get rewarded, and they lost mm. a bit of faith. They now got a line lifeline. It's a shame because they stopped the second goal from going in. They've got a chance, and it's Collins who's flung across the box, caused confusion, and Hess gets the final touch. It's a shame, West Brom. Just could have got equalised. Oh, oh. They've left for me. They've left it too mm. late. They really have. For Aston Villa, a team who haven't won in so long, it's quite simply and naturally nervy times in the closing minutes of that. Who knows? Another goal flash could be on the way. To Carroll Road now. Chance. Norwich against Portsmouth. Robin Bailey's been watching Portsmouth uh, do the business so far. Yes, the Canaries' promotion push is stalling here. They're one nil down to Pompey, and that Pompey goal was made in the Premier League. So much ex Premier League talent, of course, as Chris Martin has a shot deflected wide. Um, and uh, it was a brilliant run from David Nugent which created it down the right he burned off midfielders and defenders got himself clear very unselfishly crossed it for Dave Kitson to thump home it was a wonderful goal he must have done those 50 metres in the equivalent of an 11 second 100 metre sprint absolutely brilliant David Nugent has been the difference and it's 1-0 Pompey now, the uh, Fulham really could do with not drawing another game. Sunderland, however, have just been flying, haven't they? To Craven Cottage and Roger Johnson to tell us about the deadlock. We're uh, two and a half minutes into five minutes of added time. It's still nil-nil here, Colin, although uh, Sunderland just went close. I told you Zenden was looking likely to be stretched off. Well, he wasn't. If he was seeing double after being hit in the face, there was nothing wrong with his vision as he released Darren Bent one-on-one -on -one with Schwarzer, but Bent poked his effort wide of the post. At the other end, Fulham still pressing as well, but Zenden now on the ball as Sunderland finished the game strongly, looking to try and pinch a winner with a shot from Richardson. It's tame, it's wide of the post, and it's still nil-nil. 15 points from 27 um, uh, for Sunderland, who've really turned their season around. Uh, Dagenham and Redbridge, they've hardly ever win to talk about all season. 2 0 up now away to uh, Carlisle. Danny Green in the 89th minute. Looks like change times. A rare happy Saturday night for fans of Dagenham and Redbridge. To Goodison Park, the other 0 0, the only other 0 0 in the Premier League, watched by Damien Johnson. 
Yes, it remains that scoreline, Colin. It still remains all Everton, although Wigan have threatened occasionally on the break. A minute to go. It's been a real frustrating afternoon for the home side. They've had a, a strange season for them, languishing uh, near the foot of the table with Wigan. Um, they're pressing for some kind of winner, but the clock ticks away and uh, Everton's chances tick away. Nil-nil. Well, Blackpool have their backs against the wall at the Britannia. As you'd imagine, Stoke on a great run of form, throwing everything at the seaside side. And Andrew James is watching this. Yes, Neil Erdler has just had to clear off the line for Blackpool, Colin. We came here talking about Sir Stanley Matthews and they'll be going home talking about DJ Campbell. The change in the generations, of course. But Blackpool hanging on. They still lead through that goal at the start of the second half from DJ Campbell. Stoke throwing the kitchen sink, absolutely everything at the Blackpool goal, and we're deep, deep into stoppage time. It's still Stoke nil, Blackpool one. Late goal for Ian Turner to tell us about. He's watching St Mirren against St Johnston. It's a goal for St Johnston. They have snatched it right at the death, I would suggest, because we are now into about three minutes of stoppage time. It was Liam Craig. It was a high ball into the St Mirren defence. They didn't clear it. Craig, cool as you like, stroked it into the back of the net. St Johnston have now led twice. Can they hang on? Great save. Thank you very much. Uh, it's all going off at the moment, but thankfully for fans of Aberdeen, a full-time whistle at Tyne Castle, Brian. It certainly has, yeah. Hearts 5, Aberdeen 0. Craig Brown with a huge task in his hand. He officially takes over on Monday morning. He watched his team from the stand this afternoon. Templeton, a double from Skagel. Elliott and Novakovic, the scorers. Hearts 5, third the table. Six points now behind Celtic. Aberdeen rooted to the bottom. Nil. All that hullabaloo, of course, about a change of management at Aberdeen, but let's not forget they started the day joint bottom of the SPL and Hearts would expect... Not too late to make a difference. The only real downside for City aside that uh, was a petulant performance from Mario Balotelli, who was also booked for descent and then subbed on the hour. So while the Hammers' recovery has hit the skids, Roberto Mancini's side are now unbeaten in their last seven trips to London and their joint top of the league. West Ham 1, Man City 3. A walk in the park for Ian Holloway and Blackpool in this Premier League. What was all the fuss about, they'll be thinking, to the Britannia Stadium? Andrew James can tell us about the fact that Blackpool are now four games unbeaten. Yep, and four Premier League away wins as well, Colin. Superb performance from uh, Blackpool. They spent the week training on the beach, but it was Stoke City who ended up looking like the donkeys because they hit the woodwork twice, Stoke, but they really had no answer for the skill and the pace and the energy of Blackpool. DJ Campbell got the goal that separates the two sides, got it right at the start of the uh, second half. Varney and Adams setting him up. Uh, Gary Taylor Fletcher should have made it 2 0, and the only disappointment for Blackpool is that a fifth yellow card for Charlie Adam means they'll miss him in the forthcoming uh, fixtures. But the good news is all with Blackpool. Disappointment for Stoke. Only Spurs and Man United have won here so far this season. Now you can add Blackpool to that list. Stoke City nil, Blackpool one. Blackpool and West Bromwich Albion at the moment claim only a second win in 11 Premier League games. Let's catch up on uh, Fulham Sunderland at uh, Craven Cottage. Uh, Roger Johnson's there for us and a point apiece. It finished Fulham nil, Sunderland nil. Two draw specialists who rarely muster a goal when they meet were true to form. Fulham had the majority of the chances. The pick of them saw Andy Johnson denied by Simon Mignolet's legs from two yards. While at the other end, Darren Bent poked wide of the post when one-on-one -on -one with Schwartz are late on. And that summed up Sunderland's afternoon. They didn't manage a shot on target. And to compound Steve Bruce's frustration, he lost Anton Ferdinand early in the game with a hamstring injury. Another injured centre-half. Full-time at Craven Cottage. Fulham nil, Sunderland nil. And Sunderland move up to sixth in your Barclays Premier League, although that could change depending on the result of the late kickoff. Two managers under real pressure now. Darren Ferguson in one quarter, Roy Keane in the other, presiding over Ipswich's worst run in nearly 16 years, and we have a full-time whistle at Deepdale, James Mason. It's just ended, Colin. Preston won, Ipswich Town nil. Ian Hume's fourth goal for Preston proved enough in what was an end-to-end -end encounter, but for long periods, Ipswich dominated proceedings, but Hume's goal early in the second half could yet condemn Roy Keane's uh, career here at Ipswich Town. That's six defeats on the bounce. No arguments with the goal, however, created by John Parkin on the right and centred for his strike partner to fire home. It's Preston's first win in eight, but as I say, Ipswich, sixth straight defeat. I mentioned at the top of the programme, tin hats time for me. Preston won, Ipswich Town mm. nil. Time to talk of a mini-revival for Preston North End fans. Give you your credit, two draws and a win in your last 
three games. We should have a full time now at Oakwell, I believe. Barnsley and Sheffield United. Naz can tell us. Barnsley won, Sheffield United nil. Hugo Kalache's first half strike, Colin, enough to seal all three points in this South Yorkshire derby. It didn't really inspire anything, and United lack cutting edge and quality, especially in the second period. I wonder if a phone call from the Welsh FA could tempt Gary Speed down to the Welsh borders. It's finished here. Barnsley won, Sheffield United nil. And the Tykes on the beaten and five. Caro Road and Robin Bailey for some late drama from the BBC. You may well be able to hear the Pompey fans away to my right because they've just got a second. Greg Holford has got a penalty and again it was that man, David Nugent, who burned off his defender. He is so quick, that man. And uh, I guess you'd expect it of a guy who's had a cap for England, but he has been the difference in this game, no doubt about it. He created the first goal for Dave Kitson and there he went. He went down in the penalty box. No doubt it was a penalty. And to add insult to injury for Norwich, They've had Leon Barnett sent off a second bookable offence. Stupidly, he threw the ball at the referee. Idiot. It's 2-0 it's to Portsmouth. It's just finished. Everton in 15th, Wigan in 18th. No change there after the game at Goodison Park. Damien Johnson. No, because it finished nil-nil. A frustrating afternoon for the home side. A useful away point for the visitors. Everton created a host of convertible chances but lacked the killer instinct in front of goal and found Wigan keeper Ali Alhabsi in terrific form. Tim Cahill, Saha, Pinar and Coleman all denied. Cahill hit the post with a second-half header. Jermaine Beckford, uh, scorer at Chelsea last week, replaced the disappointing Saha. He couldn't reprise his heroics at Stamford Bridge. Wigan were resolute throughout and almost nicked it late on. Ronnie Stam's effort on the break turned around the post by Tim Howard. Nil-nil, booze from the home fans at the final whistle. Super Billy Sharp with a 100th goal of his professional career, but he'd be crying into his non-alcoholic lager later tonight. Let's get a full-time Leicester against Doncaster with Mark Bishop. Leicester City 5, Doncaster Rovers 1, Sven Smorgas ball probably bouncing off the walls of the Leicester dressing room at half-time, uh, Colin, after his side were put to the sword in the first half. Billy Sharp's early goal is 100th in his career, and then spurn chances from Doncaster should have been all over. But then uh, Gallagher's controversial penalty right at the break. Leicester went off still in the game and uh, whatever Sven did at half time well it's a magic formula isn't it because then Leicester ran riot a Wellens rocket 2-1 Carl Norton 3-1 the Mercurial Darius Vassell 4-1 and then in stoppage time substitute Martin Waghorn with another easy goal 5-1 Leicester's biggest victory this season all the goals going through in the very print. There, look out for your team there. We'll get round as many as possible. So let's get to the golf farm. And Harry Grayson's been watching Huddersfield and Brighton. Yeah, Huddersfield won 2 1, but angry scenes here, Colin. Uh, a lot of the players squaring up against each other at the end. In fact, they're still onto the pitch now, just coming off. It all really centered around a controversial moment right at the end. Brighton thought that the ball was over the line from a header, but it wasn't as far as the referee was concerned. And then we had a few players punching each other. 2 1, final score. Thank you very much. Uh, fans had their way. We'd have played an extra half an hour at Turf Moor for the game between Burnley and Leeds. An absolute cracker, Richard. A cracking game, Colin. Burnley 2, Leeds 3. Leeds have shown more than once this season that they're a team with fighting spirit and they showed it in bucket loads today. Down to first half goals from Easton and Rodriguez. The visitors licked their wounds and fought back with Gradle, Becchio, his 12th of the season and a terrific solo effort from Housen. It's now 14 points from their last six matches on the road for Leeds, delighting almost 5,000 fans who'd made the journey across the Pennines. Happiness at home has been the case in the last two outings for Bristol City. They stay at Ashton Gate, they welcome Derby and a smile still there, Hamish Marshall. Yeah, because they won by two goals to nil, three successive wins, both goals scored by Brett Pittman, taking his tally to five in three games. Derby just didn't create enough in the last third. Their angry David James wasn't sent off in the first half for a foul on Chris Cummins when he was the last man. Four defeats in five for Derby now. We have had just about everything. Let's catch your breath and get the classified football results now on the BBC with Tim Gudgeon. First, the Barclays Premier League, Aston Villa 2, West Bromwich Albion 1. Everton 0, Wigan Athletic 0. Fulham 0, Sunderland 0. Newcastle United and Liverpool kick off at half past five. Stoke City nil, Blackpool one. West Ham United one, Manchester City three. In the Empire Championship, Barnsley one, Sheffield United nil. Bristol City two,
Derby County, nil. Burnley, two. Leeds United, three. Crystal Palace and Hull City kick off at 20 past five. Leicester City, five. Doncaster Rovers, one. Middlesbrough, one. Cardiff City, nil. Norwich City, nil. Portsmouth, two. Preston North End, one. Ipswich Town, nil. Reading, nil. Coventry City, nil. And Scunthorpe United's match with Nottingham Forest postponed. In League One, AFC Bournemouth, nil. Hartlepool United, one. Carlisle United, nil. Dagenham and Redbridge, two. Coltis United, nil. Yeovil Town, nil. Huddersfield Town, two. Brighton Hope Albion, one. Notts County, two. MK Dons, nil. Oldham Athletic match with Swindon Town postponed. Plymouth Argyle, two. Exeter City, nil. Sheffield Wednesday, six. Bristol Rovers, two. Southampton, nil. Brentford, two. And Tranmere Rovers, one. Leighton Orient, two. In League Two, Barnet, two. Accrington Stanley, nil. Bradford City, one. Hereford United, nil. Burton Albion, three. Southend United, one. Chesterfield, one. Torquay United, nil. Lincoln City and Oxford United match postponed. Macclesfield Town 2, Gillingham 4, Morecambe 1, Port Vale 0. Rotherham United 1, Aldershot Town 0. Shrewsbury Town 1, Cheltenham Town 1. Stevenage 0, Northampton Town 1. Stockport County 3, Crew Alexandra 3. And Wickham Wanderers 1, Berry 0. Several postponements in the Scottish games today. Clydesdale Bank Scottish Premier League, Celtics match with Kilmarnock, Dundee United with Motherwell and Hamilton Academicals with Hibernian, all three postponed. Hearts 5, Aberdeen 0. Inverness Caledonian Thistle 1, Rangers 1. St Mirren 1, St Johnston 2. In the Scottish Division 1, Cowden Beath Falkirk match postponed. Dunfermline Athletic 1, Queen of the South, nil. Greenock Morton, nil. Dundee, one. Partick Thistle, one. Ross County, one. And Stirling Albion's match with Wraith Rovers postponed. In Arnbury, Scottish Div 2, Airdrie United and Dumbarton match postponed. East 5 6, Stenhouse Muir, nil. Four for Athletics match with Alloa Athletic and Lynx Livingstons with Air United both postponed. Peter Head, nil. Brecon City, five. And Scottish Div 3, Albion Rovers and Arbroath, Annan Athletic and Clyde, East Stirlingshire and Queen's Park, all three matches postponed. Montrose nil, Elgin City one, and Stranra one, Berwick Rangers one. In the Welsh Premier, Aberystwyth Town one, Bangor City one, latest score. Airbus UK Broughton four, Haverford West nil, Barla Town and Neath match postponed. Carmarthen Town 1, Newtown 1, and for Talbot Town 0, the New Saints 2. In the Carling Premiership, Crusaders 3, Portadown 1, Dungannon Swifts 1, Ballymena United 2, Glenavon 1, Lisbon Distillery 1, and Glentoran 1, Donegal Celtic 0. Thanks, Tim. What's done is done, so let's have a look at the tables. This is where your team are this Saturday evening. None of this morning's top three were in action, and that's allowed Manchester City to make their move. City up to second after the 3-1 win at West Ham. Only goal difference keeping them off the top. Leaders Arsenal play Manchester United on Monday, don't forget, and Chelsea are at Tottenham. Tomorrow you'll see that match of the day two from 10.55 on BBC One. Uh, West Ham remain rooted to the bottom after that loss to Man City. Avram Grant side... Now just four points from safety. Wolves play Birmingham City tomorrow. Wigan complete the bottom three. They're below Fulham on goal difference after they both drew today. In the Empire Championship, defeat for leaders QPR last night has not proved too costly. Uh, uh, five of the six teams immediately below them failed to muster a victory between them. Uh, the exception were Leeds, who came magnificently from two goals down to beat Burnley and move up to fourth. The performance of the day. The bottom two going into today's game both won. Preston remain at the foot of the table despite their first victory in eight, while Middlesbrough move up two places 
to 21st. Crystal Palace host fellow strugglers Hull in this evening's kickoff. Scunthorpe's game, don't forget, was postponed yesterday. Let's move on to League One. Leaders Brighton have had their advantage trimmed to just three points after losing at third place Huddersfield. Sheffield United climbed to second. They thumped Bristol Rovers 6-2. But Charlton will move back to the top if they beat Walsall tomorrow. The main word there is if. And in the bottom, well, the bottom side, Walsall travel to Charlton tomorrow. So a story still to be told there. Bristol Rovers have joined Yeovil and Dagenham and Redbridge in the relegation zone after their heavy defeat. League two now, Chesterfield have regained top spot courtesy of a win uh, over Torquay and defeat for overnight leaders Port Vale at Morecambe. Berry remain third while Rotherham and Shrewsbury swap places. Hereford are now four points adrift at the bottom as a consequence of Barnet winning at home and Morecambe climbed three places following their surprise victory over High Flying Vale. Let's have a look at the SPL. The Scottish Premier League and Rangers increased their lead to three points after drawing 1-1 at Inverness, Caledonian Thistle. A missed penalty there from Kenny Miller and a missed chance to increase that lead to five points. Celtic, of course, were due to play Kilmarnock. And despite sunshine at Parkhead, one of three SPL games to be postponed. Aberdeen on the foot of the table now. They were thumped 5-0 by Hearts. New manager Craig Brown watched on from the stands. Here are your big Premier League headlines. And on the beach and life's a beach tonight. DJ Campbell's second half strike takes the Tangerines into the top half of the table. Victory at the Britannia. And for Everton, well, they still await their first win since the clocks went back after being thwarted time and time again by fellow strugglers Wigan. Everyone at Goodison must be in the dark about how this uh, one ended goalless. Plenty of cottage industry, but no end product as Fulham and Sunderland uh, uh, do what they do best and draw. They've now mustered 19 stalemates between them this season and they're pretty sick of being the last game and match of the day. Gabby's in charge tonight and she'll have all those highlights of the Premier League games, obviously. And as sure as night follows day, the Football League show with Mark Chapman follows MOTD. And this is kind of important. Tomorrow, match of the day two has been promoted to BBC One at the expense of a later time of 10.55. Guests have been falling quicker than Newcastle United managers, but whoever turns up will bring you Spurs, Chelsea, Wolves against Birmingham and Bolton against Blackburn. Uh, gentlemen, the headline today is probably Man City, an honourable mention for Aston Villa as well. You first, Garth? Yeah, well, Julio can believe a sigh of relief. He stopped his poor run. Man City, um, Toure and Silva in particular ran the show. But you've got to start asking your questions. 17 games, 12 points West Ham, are they beginning to run out of road? And can Avram Grant really do this job? OK. And Gary, Aston Villa, I know they went 2-0 up. They haven't won in that long. It was always going to be nervy, but the three points is what mattered. Yeah, I think there would have been huge pressure on Julia to the loss of West Brom today, being a local rivals as well. But I think also you've got to give a mention to Dita Blackpool again. He and what Ian Holloway's team's been a, a breath of fresh air, as we said, most of the season. They managed to get another three points away from home. Wonderful. Right, if you're heading out in your car or jumping into the bath and turn the telly on for 606 with Darren Fletcher and Robbie Savage. And that's all from us, but you can rejoin us in the red button. <laughs>